The other question about the U.S. role, that's very important, because, you know, Rory points to Brazil and says, well, they were able to do a lot of nice things, and they didn't have this polarization and conflict and all these things that we don't like. Well, that's great, but they weren't facing the same kind of opposition that had, you know, according to Petkoff, Theodor Petkoff, a leader of the opposition himself, said they had a strategy of military overthrow from 1999 to 2003, okay? Brazil didn't have that. They had the military was as nationalistic as the government. And they had—they didn't have the United States on the side of this, not only the military, but the opposition, and telling them all along and pouring money in there and saying, you just—you know, we get rid of everybody we don't like in this region, and you just hang in there, and you don't have to deal with this guy. You don't have to uh, be part of a government. You can boycott the 2005 elections, uh, as they did for the National Assembly. You can pretend that the 2004 referendum was stolen, even though Jimmy Carter, the Carter Center, certified it, and so did the OAS. This is what Chavez had to deal with. So, yeah, he was a polarizing figure, if you want to say that, but he was dealing with people who, every time he offered them an olive branch, they just slapped him in the face. And uh, they had no intention of ever dealing with him. And, you know, I, in that sense, you can say there's progress, because here, at least, you know, uh, they're participating in elections. They started doing that in, in 2006, and they have started accepting the results. So there's some progress there. But uh, again, you know, this is the U.S. main, as I said, it's the number one or two target for regime change. The opposition knows that, and they don't feel like there's any reason to uh, work with the government the way the opposition in Brazil does.